Good afternoon. I'm Assistant Sheriff John McGrath, and we're here to brief you on additional de details as we know them today about the officer-involved shooting that occurred on Thursday, January 6, 2022. This is officer-involved shooting number one for 2022, fatal number one. The same time last year, we had zero OISs. This event was initiated as a burglary at 1026 a.m. on January 6th. The address given was a 6700 block of Francis Celia Avenue, Las Vegas. They all, this officer involved shooting occurred near the intersection of South Broadbent Boulevard and Cherry Street, which is in Southeast Area Command. The involved officer is Jason Guerra. He is 40 years old and has been with the LVMPD since 2005. In this incident, Officer Guerra was armed with a Glock 17, nine millimeter handgun, equipped with a tactical light. The investigation revealed he fired four rounds during this incident. Officer Guerra is assigned to the Community Policing Division, Southeast Area Command. The suspect in this event is identified as Ricardo Antonio Otero. He was a 30-year-old Hispanic male, adult, 5'6", 170 pounds. He is pictured to my left. In this incident, Otero was armed with a large fixed blade hunting style knife. Otero's charges, if he had survived, are attempt burglary while in possession of a deadly weapon, violation of an extended protective order, resisting police officer with a weapon, and attempt murder on a police officer. The details of this officer involved shooting are as follows. On Thursday, January 6, 2022, the LVMPD Dispatch Center received a call from a citizen reporting an in-progress burglary in the 6700 block of Francis Celia Avenue. The caller stated that his son, Ricardo Antonio Otero, was armed with a knife and was attempting to break into the house. Dispatch was advised that Otero was last seen walking out of the area and his description was provided to officers. Due to the fact that Otero was reportedly armed with a knife, the call was classified as a STAR protocol de-escalation. The criteria for STAR protocol de-escalation is as follows. There is credible information that the subject is armed with a firearm or other dangerous weapon and is using it in a manner that can cause death or serious bodily injury. The subject is acting in a threatening manner with the weapon. This does not include open carry subjects or pocket knives. This designation means that three officers and a supervisor will be assigned to the call in an attempt to de-escalate a volatile situation. As officers were en route to this call, they requested medical personnel to stage nearby. Arriving patrol officers spotted Otero on the sidewalk near the intersection of Broadbent Boulevard and Cherry Street. Several patrol officers, including Officer Jason Guerra, conducted a pedestrian stop on Otero. An officer told Otero to step in front of his patrol vehicle, but Otero refused to listen to the officer. Otero dropped a backpack he was carrying and continued to ignore all verbal commands from the officer. Otero then produced a large hunting style knife and started running towards Officer Guerra. Officer Guerra began to walk backwards, attempting to create distance from Otero while telling him to drop the knife. Otero refused to drop the knife and continued to close the distance between them. Otero then charged at Officer Guerra while holding the large knife in his hand. Officer Guerra discharged his duty weapon four times, striking Otero, causing him to fall to the ground. Otero was transported to Sunrise Hospital by medical personnel, where he succumbed to his injuries. I will now play you the 911 audio and then the body worn camera from this officer involved shooting. Emergency spelling 17200. Yeah. Uh, I need a metro over here in my house. What's your address? 
Zero. Press button. Yeah, my son. Okay. What's the street name? Okay, good thing. Okay. Huh? Sir, what's the street name? Sir, hello? 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 You got a knife. It's right here in the Okay, sir, what's the street name, though? I don't know what street you're on. What's he doing with the knife? It's right here in the house. Okay. He got a knife. Okay, is he threatening anyone with it? Is he threatening anyone with it? Yeah, somebody. He tried broken the house. With the knife? This is your son? Yeah, this is my son. He's on drugs. John 34 TV arrest. John 34 TV. John 6. We're going to go out on a possible at uh, Broadbent and Cherry. HMA, gray hat, gray sweatshirt, tan pants, and a black backpack. Ricardo, we need you to listen. That's it, all right? Listen to what they're saying. Two, Sam, Robert, David, 151, California. It's on the front of this RV. Drop the knife, Ricardo. Drop the knife! Drop the knife! Drop the knife! Ricardo! Drop the knife! Drop the knife! Ricardo! Drop the knife! This uh, concludes this briefing for the OAS. Go ahead. Did you have, have you had problems with this particular person before if there was a temporary restraining order against him? So um, I'm not going to go into his criminal history, um, but as his father told us that he has some mental health issues, and we had dealt with him when he was in crisis before. Was the TPO filed by the family in that house? Yes. Can you explain to us, even though he's, he's got a, a knife, how quickly he can close that gap between the officer and himself, if he's got a knife, how quickly that officer could have been hurt? Um, maybe we can show. Oh, he's already ahead of me. So where, where the officer parked, he was 41 feet away from where the subject dropped the backpack. And then he's at a position behind his car door, which is where we train our, our officers. And then he backed off 75 feet. Um, and if you saw his body worn camera, he uh, tripped a little bit over the curb, went all the way up to the wall. When, when he was fa his back was against the wall, that's when he fired his weapon. Uh, he couldn't retreat any further. And the subject was 12 feet away from him approximately when he discharged his rounds. If we kept playing the body worn camera, you would have seen the suspect charge at the officer even even more, but we didn't show that part where he shot. Can you talk about the de-escalation techniques that they're trying to implement right there? So we started off with the STAR protocol, which means we have more officers there. Generally, when people see more officers, they don't um, go towards them. They, they usually either give up or run. Um, and in this case, the two officers were in the one car, which is not